hello guys welcome back to my channel hi how are you <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is adeze and i'm a youtuber based in Port Harcourt, nigeria if you're new to this channel you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me like I, I really don't know like a week ago about a week ago <laughs> either a week ago or two weeks ago i made a video about traditional african or traditional nigerian child care practices that i personally refuse to do i talked about the ones that i didn't do but i don't judge anybody who does them i talked about the ones that i don't i don't agree with at all at all at all okay and i got a lot of positive responses on that video i was like chai women so you have been suffering in silence since eh you have been suffering in silence since why don't we form an alliance and stand up to these traditional practices okay <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, so many women have been suffering, so many women have, you know, they, they know that this thing is not just right, but nobody wants to stop it, nobody wants to be the one to break tradition, and to be honest, I don't understand that mentality, you don't want to be the one to break tradition, you feel like, uh, because our ancestors did it, you must do it, I don't get that concept at all, because, first of all, our ancestors not human beings, they are human beings like you and I, you are somebody's ancestor, so what tradition are you living for your for your descendants what tradition are you living for them and tradition was made for man man was not made for tradition so it is okay it is very 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 okay for you to question traditions okay it is very okay to question traditions especially the ones that do not really make sense with based on the recent technology recent knowledge recent you know research things that don't make sense or things that don't align with them then discard them okay if in the future again research now shows that those things we are better then at least you know that you are making an informed decision for that time not that because our ancestors have been doing it our ancestors we are killing twins so i hope you guys know some of them are killing twins some of them we are uh, mutilating their girl child you know female circumcision and all that you know tribal marks is tradition too why did we stop all those things now so at the end of the day it is okay to question tradition it is okay i feel like it even makes us better as a society if we can question some things at least even if you are still going to do them know why you are doing them and do them the proper way okay but anyway those ones are aside in this video i'm going to be telling you guys the ones that i personally agree with i'm sure based on how i talk you might think that ah, this one was not like anything african not like anything tradition traditional i also have people that made some comments in the comment section like uh, uh things that our mothers have been doing since you now to come and question you, what's your problem this one that one that one is oibo oibo next that is worrying you this one trust me guys as much as i am progressive i actually hold on to a lot of traditional beliefs and practices as well so yeah in this video let us explore some of those ways okay so the first traditional child care practice that i agree with is the concept of omugwa in the first place yes that tradition of having having your mother or your mother-in-law or a mother figure come in to take care of the new mom and the new child i applaud that concept with a thousand hands okay <laughs> i applaud it so much it is very very helpful when my mom was around there it was so helpful you know you think less you you you, you concentrate more on your baby you concentrate more on healing than on thinking of how to cook food how to make this one in my own case my kids go slept with us so my mom did not have to wake up in the night to take care of the kids it was actually we that took care of um, the kids at night actually my husband not even myself my husband is a g in that one he'll wake up carry the child and be walking around the house by 3 a.m. as in my mom was shocked even me i was like it can never be me anyway better you than me so congrats kudos <laughs> you know he'll wake up and carry the child you know see the child sleeps he'll not bring the child back to me to breastfeed for before the child will sleep and all that okay but a lot of moms at a lot of grandmas a lot of women who come from mugo actually stop at night to take care of the kids so that the new mom can get enough sleep which is so fantastic like you guys the idea of omugo i wish every woman who gives birth experiences it okay if you don't have your mom around at least let your mother-in-law be around or let a motherly figure who knows how to take care of you very well be around in cases where your mom is not um available or there's someone else that can do it better like please allow the person come don't be kind of women i want to do i want to do everything myself i want to do everything myself you will get depressed though you will get depressed i feel like having somebody around actually uh, contributes to the reason why we don't have so many cases of postpartum depression in nigeria okay i that's my personal belief i didn't do any research anyway but that's what i personally believe okay and 
you guys postpartum depression is different from baby blues oh baby blues is a lot more common than we think okay what many of you are calling ppd what many of you are saying oh i was depressed you are just having baby blues okay depression is much more serious and is much more difficult to deal with so let us make that uh, demarcation right now so that you don't downplay those who actually have actual postpartum depression okay let's not throw that word around anyhow you might actually have baby blues baby blues is way less serious than actual postpartum depression okay baby blues is just where you're not feeling so excited about the new baby you're just trying to adjust you're trying to heal so you're not as excited as you should be it happens with so many women so women don't even feel it at all why, why so many women feel it okay it, sh it should not be confused with actual postpartum depression which I has very severe um implications okay yeah so the concept of a mugwa i give that one a hundred over one in fact one thousand over a hundred every month every new mom needs somebody to come and do a mugwa for her okay somebody let it be your elder sister your sister your cousin your friend somebody needs to come and help you out okay it's not easy to do it with just you and your husband because in many cases even the husband is stressed my mom's presence actually helps a lot okay anyway moving on <laughs> okay so the second one and this one actually kind of helps with postpartum depression as well okay this one is exclusive breastfeeding now i don't know if it's correct to add this one to this video because a lot of women don't even i mean even our grandma a lot of them don't even do exclusive themselves so they don't really they don't really care they're not trying to push you to do exclusive i know that in my own case my mom did not really care whether i did exclusive in fact she wanted me to go and buy formula for my child because she felt like i was suffering too much okay so i don't know if i'll call it it's still traditional child because in those days that's what that's all they were doing they were breastfeeding children when they see formula to give child to give children now now i know that this topic can be very controversial for me personally I am not against anybody who doesn't want to do exclusive. I'm not against anybody who wants to even do solely formula or solely, you know, anything else, okay? I'm not against it in any way. But this one is for people who want to do exclusive breastfeeding and somehow you can't do it because people are trying to discourage you or you're not getting adequate help, okay? I personally did exclusive breastfeeding for my two kids. For Cora, Cora stopped sucking on her own, on her own oh, by two months. And I think part of why she stopped was because I started using bottle for her from, you know, when she was born because my breast milk did not come in quickly. So we gave her formula in the hospital and then I was always expressing to be sure that I was getting breast milk. So, but she just got used to bottle. So if you give her bottle and then bring the breast, it's like, why are you suffering me? Can you give me the one that will just go sharp, sharp? So, <laughs> so then uh, by two months, she hated breastfeeding. She preferred the bottle. When I put her to breast, she would just be uncomfortable. She would be crying. So after a while, when I realized that she didn't like, you know, going to the breast, I had to start expressing. Yes. I express milk tire like I turned to cow <laughs> she drank just breast milk from the bottle till she was five months and three weeks that when I now introduced formula and cereal okay when she was five months and three weeks okay I'm not going to lie that one was actually real real time stress that one was real life a stressful situation for me because I was pumping every two hours and then my husband was still going on shift so he will not be around for two weeks of the month that two weeks I'll be alone with the child. All I was doing was, I didn't even have house help. My mom had already gone. I didn't have house help. All I was doing was, I will express, I will feed, I will put her to bed, then I'll wash bottle, wash uh, the pump, then I'll express again, I'll feed her, I'll put her to bed. Uh, that's what I was doing throughout morning and night. Every two hours, I was, I was expressing. <laughs> hey. But you know the funny thing? The reason why I did it was because I know the benefit of breast milk, okay? Breast milk is still the best option for an infant from zero to six months. Breast milk is still the best option, okay? I know this one is hard for some people to admit. I know some people don't agree with it. I know some people have so many things to say about it. But facts do not care about your feelings, okay? In the words of my friend Ben Shapiro, Facts do not care about your feelings. Breast milk is still the best option for an infant between zero and six months of age, okay? Now, if you can't do it for any reason, I'm not saying that children who are not breastfed are not going to do well. Me, personally, I wasn't breastfed though. I think my mom breastfed me for maybe a month or so, then she stopped. And I'm the one here now, healthy, fine, pretty, intelligent, all joined. So I don't have anything against not breastfeeding your child. But if you want to, it is the best option for your child. Just try your best to do it. Um, for Ava's one, I made sure I did not make that mistake I made with Cora. I did not introduce bottle at all. And Ava 
breastfed I, breast, I breastfed Eva till she was almost a year and when I stopped her from breastfeeding she didn't even know how to suck from bottle like you give her bottle suck from she'll be biting the, the uh, nipple of the bottle so at the end of the day if it is something you want to do it is the best option for your child go ahead and do it eat as much um, calves as can sustain your breast milk take things like oats old-fashioned oats okay eat old-fashioned oats get enough sleep drink enough water see some people try to say things like not every not every mother can produce enough breast milk for her child okay some children suck a lot so the mother cannot produce enough breast milk see breast milk works on supply and demand if your child sucks more and if you pump more you are actually going to have more milk for your child more breast milk for your child okay the less you the less you feed your child the less breast milk you you will produce and that's just nature that's that's god's way of controlling it not our boobs will all be full and painful okay that's just god's way of controlling your your supply if your child doesn't need that much then he's not your, your body's not going to supply that much okay but if you if you express more or you feed more then you signal your body that you actually need more and your body will produce more it's simple simple demand and supply and it is fantastic okay now i'm not going to deny it there are some women who actually cannot like they cannot but let me tell you something the women who in real sense cannot i didn't say do not or, or would not or don't want to the women who cannot produce enough breast milk for their children based on diseases or you know chemotherapy or cancer or something or maybe genetic defect or whatever women who cannot are actually very very little like the percentage are so little that you'll be amazed so most people when we might say things like ah i couldn't produce enough, enough breast milk for my child no sister if you are supplementing from the beginning how do you expect your breast milk to now become plenty you've already told your body that you don't need that much so your body's not going to produce that much okay and it's even common sense okay for centuries before you know formula came out women have been exclusively breastfeeding their children and humanity has been going on and on okay so it's not now that it's not be a big deal breastfeeding will not be a big deal okay it's actually a very natural and very beautiful thing it helps with bonding Ha! Ah, I want to talk so much about breastfeeding. You no, know? this video is not about breastfeeding. You no, know? because let me move on to the next point. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the next one that I love so much is backing of your child. Okay, baby, baby wearing, but on your back. See, sometimes all these baby carriers don't just cut it. Okay, I actually had a very good baby carrier. Um, I had the ego, ego baby. Is it ego baby or ego baby? I had the ego baby carrier. It was very expensive, but it was really, really nice. It's very, very good. But even that one was not enough. Like once I put my child on my back, the difference is clear. I am hands free. My front is free. It's just my back that the baby is on my back. So my front is free. I can do whatever I want to do. And I notice that when I carry... Anyway, carrying babies basically, even if it's on the front or your back, helps to calm babies down, you know, helps to put them to sleep, helps to increase the bonding between you and your child, you know. So, yeah, carrying babies are actually very fantastic. I advise any mom out there to try and carry your baby more often, even if you, even if you cannot back your baby, because some women don't actually don't know how to back babies. If you cannot back your baby, then please get a baby carrier and carry your baby in front. It actually helps. But the traditional method of using a wrapper, Putting your child on your back and tying the child that is it is just the best for me i did it for all my children in fact if they leave me i'll be back in cora <laughs> because there are times when cora is stopping i'm just like can i just put this girl on my back so that all of us can have peace in this house okay especially when she wants to watch something she wants to play she wants to eat she wants to do she just wants to be cranky i feel like carrying cora as big as she is on my back because i know that it helps babies a lot so and i also read somewhere a long time ago i read somewhere that the act of carrying babies on your back that it helps with their hip alignment one thing one thing one english i didn't really pay attention to that study when i read it i was just really like oh okay nice because i didn't have kids then and i, I think I, I was not even married i was single when i read that thing okay so yeah something about it helping with their hip alignment you know that even people who have hip problems that they suggest them to stay in that same position that babies stay when they're on the back i can't remember all these things okay but I also read somewhere that carrying babies on your back actually helps mom's tummy go in because first of all you're tying the wrapper around your chest and then when you're carrying a baby you are sometimes forced to suck in your tummy it helps women's um, tummies go back to normal and I'm not sure how true it is but I also read it some time ago like see you guys I actually research so much and I read a lot of research so much that Sometimes when the information comes out, I'm like, where did this information come from? How did I even know these things, okay? Human brain is just amazing. And I wasn't exclusively breastfed. So, like I said, I'm just saying this for a couple of people that want to get offended. I'm just saying you, your child will be fine if you do not breastfeed your child. But breastfeeding is still the best option for your child. Even on formula, it's written there, breast milk is the best option for your baby. <laughs> 
I feel like somebody's going to come for me. When she comes for me, I'm going to pin her comments in comment section, okay? So when you're typing, you know what I type, I'm going to pin your comments. <laughs> Okay, so the fourth one is using of spoon and plates to feed babies, okay? So for this one, I think a lot more people are beginning to understand that using spoon and plates to feed your child, even if it's milk, yes, is actually number one more hygienic than using a bottle. It reduces the chances of the child being attached to bottle because they already have that motion of eating with spoon. So you can easily, you know, transition them to eating solids and it helps them more, get more independent. Because someone like Cora, to be honest, Cora, Cora took bottle till she was two years. Like, two years, period. It was even me that told myself, N -n -n, so it's, it, it, what was going on here? She didn't like eating from spoon and plate. You, if you go and make uh, pap for her in plate, she will just eat more. She won't want to finish the rest. We will not have to put into a bottle for her so for her to now finish it. So, me, I followed to cause that one, okay? So, with Ava, in, in fact, Ava was the complete opposite. Ava did not even know how to. Not like she didn't even like it. She didn't even know how to suck from bottle. You put bottle in her mouth, she'll be biting it, she'll be playing with it, okay? So, yeah. Um, but in the olden days, they were not using bottles. They were using spoons to feed children, feed them water, feed them milk, feed them, you know, uh, uh, solids, runny solids, like pap watery pap they were using spoon to feed babies and i give that one to a thumbs up try and feed it's, it's difficult to no I'm, I'm not even going to lie bottle feeding is easier is a little bit more stressful because you have to be there doing it feeding the child meanwhile but you can just put it in their mouth and be doing other things okay so it's actually easier to bottle feed but it's more beneficial to spoon feed because at the end of the day it reduces the chances of the child getting infection and diseases from you know unclean bottles on or, or on sterilized bottles okay yeah and also another one that i love so much is that pepper soup gym miracle or all, all those pepper soup that they give new moms i love them so much they contain a lot of healthy spices and herbs okay so those herbs help to contract your uterus and bring it back to normal and also expel you know unwanted blood in your system so all those herbs, all those pepper soup that they're making, drink it too, sister, drink it very well, okay? Me, I, I actually lost appetite with my children, so I didn't really drink it much. But when I could, I was always drinking them. So yeah, those pepper soup, I give them another thumbs up. They are really nice. Just drink, you can drink them warm, you can drink them hot, not too hot anyway. Drink warm pepper soup or hot pepper soup if that's what you like. And it actually helps to contract your uterus and you know it, ha it helps in postpartum recovery. I just wish that they can package it somehow very well so that not only will Africans have, um, not only will Nigerians have better access to it, but at least people outside Nigeria, people in diaspora, or even foreigners can actually have access to these herbs, okay? So yeah, for that one, I give it a thumbs up. It actually works and it actually helps a lot, okay? So yeah, what are the traditional African practices that you actually like and you feel that more people should practice? Please leave it in the comment section. Don't come and tell me about vagina steaming, steaming okay? I heard a few people telling me about vagina steaming that yeah, it was even recommended to them to steam their vagina. See, what is recommended is sits baths, okay? It's called sits baths. It's not vagina steaming. You sit in warm, lukewarm water, not hot steam, okay? You sit in warm water and it helps to heal your stitches and also helps to relieve um, uh, what they call this thing. Hemorrhage. Is it hemorrhage? Not hemorrhage. What's that thing? Hemopoids, hematoids. If I know the name, I write it down. Forgotten the name of that thing. That thing they call pile. Hemor hemorrhoids, 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 hemorrhoids. <laughs> Anyway, that brings me to the end of this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell so I'm notified anytime I post a new video, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! Mwah.